Hi everyone, I hope you're having a fantastic day so far. Today, I wanna to talk about living with a non-contractor partner. I think it's a good topic to talk about because sometimes the focus is on me, 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 as in you, 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 but not necessarily potentially the person that you may be living with, okay? Or the, the person you may live with in the future, okay? These are all things we need to think about. Now, it's important to discuss because when it comes to contracting, there's this whole sort of like lack of security and this potential imposter syndrome and there's all these mental things that may come into play if you're not ready to jump into this space. So here are some pointers and some things that I thought about. You don't have to take the advice. This is just stuff that I thought about when it comes to this stuff. The first thing is to respect each other's working hours, okay? So there needs to be boundaries. As a contractor, you may be working many different hours around the clock. So if you're inside of I-35, it may be very similar to what your partner's doing if it's a nine to five. If it's outside, you may decide to work when feels best. Now, if you're totally, totally independent as an independent consultant or freelance consultant, as opposed to a freelance con contractor, okay, there's a slight nuance there, then I guess really and truly is about creating a space and time that makes sense for you during your day so that there isn't a crazy clash because your partner's for a reason. You need to spend time with each other. You need to be able to have conversations and all this kind of stuff there. There may be situations where you could be working, working, working and have no conversation with the person who's living with you, even though they're in the other room, okay? So think about how you can sort of craft and create boundaries and the right time management or activity management, so I say, so that you don't become strangers, okay? <laughs> or, or, or just housemates living in your house, whether it's rented or, or paid for. So that's the first thing. The second thing I want to say is that you have to understand for them, they're a bit of a safety net. And I know that sounds bad to say, but it's true. Because if something really drastic happens and the contract market goes all crazy or your niche or industry just doesn't work out or you get removed for whatever reason, their income becomes extremely important because of the way it's been set up systematically, you know, in our society. So you have to be grateful for them as a person, okay? Whether you're bringing in more of the bacon or not, that doesn't matter. There is still consistent flow of money that's coming in with that individual provided that they don't leave. And so the fact that they're in this position, in some ways, they're kind of sacrificing their own li livelihood, so to speak, based on the risk that you've decided to make. And, you know, in many cases, this may block or stop a partner from wanting to go contracting. OK, so you have to think about the position that they're in relative to you as the privileged individual who's taken upon this opportunity. Now, I will say the third thing is that before you jump into the space, you need to see if they're OK with it. Do they support this? Or do they envisage a future where you are comfortably contracting, doing what you're doing? And there may be situations where you may not find work. The money may not be as great. There may be inconsistencies and all that kind of stuff there, especially if you're taking breaks and all that kind of stuff. There has to be additional, you know, payment for insurance and all that kind of stuff there. Are they happy with all of this sort of like lack of stability if there was a term for it? And and if they're not happy, how does that make you feel? What does that what does that mean for you? What compromise or how are you going to communicate all of this stuff? So think about this when it comes to you moving you know, and discussing this stuff with your partner. Now, of course, the other thing I want to say is they may want to be a contractor themselves, okay? So it, is that something that is viable? I mean, they, they sort of agreed with you potentially using a scenario that you can go into contracting. So is this something that you're happy to support as well? And if so, what will make you happy, so to speak? Is it the fact that, let's say, for example, you need to make sure you have X amount in the account before you both do it? Is it a thing where it's like, OK, maybe you swap, maybe you come out of contract and you do something else? Or like, what is the criterion or criteria, should I say, in order for you both to be happy to contract together? Because two people contracting together in, in, in a household, at decent roles, you know, whether that is middle management, senior management, executive leadership, whatever it may be, it's a dangerous combination, especially if you're raking in money consistently together, working in environments that you're you're used to and you're happy and you thrive in based on your previous experience. That is dangerous. And I know there are individuals probably watching this saying, yeah, this is what I want to do. This is the plan. I, I, I want my partnership, me and my partner, to go into this space and just rake it in, okay? 
The next thing I want to say is, what is the vision that you guys are trying to set? Like, what is the aim? Because one individual going into contract and the other one not going into contracting is, is one thing, but but why, why is that set up okay? What does it serve down the line? Are you aiming to buy a property? Are you aiming to get married? Are you aiming to provide for your kids? Are you aiming to have a huge investment fund? Are you aiming to set up a business or businesses? What is it that you're trying to do? So discuss the vision. You know, I, I keep on saying this in my videos, Portfolio Life, check it out as a book. It talks about vision, velocity and values, okay? What is your vision? Where are you going? Where are you both going as individuals and as a couple? What are your values saying? What are you both saying is important to yourself and with each other? And velocity, how quickly do you want to get there? So again, think about this stuff when it comes to this stuff. The next thing I want to say is finances. What? <laughs> that, that is really important. You need to make sure that your financial statements, statements, that's plural, so your personal one and your collaborative one is solid. You need to know exactly what's coming in. You need to know exactly what's coming out. You need to know what's coming from salary and or contracting. You need to know what's coming from other things, whether that's dividends, assets, whatever it may be. And be clear about the flow of money. Review this as regularly as possible, whether it's bi-weekly, monthly, quarterly, whatever makes sense for you guys. But you have to understand what that looks like. Now, of course, if you're taking breaks and stuff here and there's a contractor, you pay yourself. You're not going to get holiday pay. You pay yourself. Of course, things can accrue if you're inside of I-35 and you've gone for that option. But you need to discuss what that looks like. And of course, when it comes to the other financials, again, if you're inside, you can have a pension set up with the umbrella company that you're with. But again, it's also important to make sure that you get some sort of self-invested private pension. So a SIP to sort that stuff out. And of course, you get all these other benefits if you're inside of I-35 or an independent sort of con contractor as well there are there are different things you can get like um discounts or private health care or whatever it may be so look into that stuff look at what the privileges are look at what they get within their nine to five in a permanent employee role and look about look look on the opportunities that are available for you especially when it comes to money you know thinking about money as well mortgages is a big thing i probably need to do a video on mortgages and all that kind of stuff there when it comes to being a contractor but essentially speaking what is applicable to you as a contractor and how does that affect this person? Because again, whether you're married in a partnership, living together and you've bought a property, your finances will be affected, okay? That your, your credit score will be affected. So all of this stuff comes into play. All of this stuff comes into play. The next thing to think about is there may be times where they have to help you out. You may be out of work and whether you're the, the bacon bringer, whatever it may be, you need to humble yourself, you know. You need to humble yourself. And there are times where, actually, that's okay. That's okay if they help you out from time to time. But recognize what they're doing. Appreciate them for playing the role that they're playing. Don't have an ego just because you may be making more money than that individual. It doesn't really matter. You're in this together. This is why you're a partnership, a loving partnership. Communication and support is really key in this, okay? You have to talk consistently and i'm not saying talking for talking sake but just be clear about what's going on in your world as a contractor they need to be clear about what's going on in their world in their permanent employment so that there's nothing being second guessed nothing's being assumed you know what's happening you're up to date so that you can plan and strategize together this is why it's good to open your mouth and speak this is really important because again it creates that consistency, it creates that understanding, and it minimizes any, any form of confusion as well. The other thing I wanna say is that obviously there are times where you wanna you know, splash the cash and all this kind of stuff there, yeah. You may wanna go on holidays, maybe you have to go on holidays because there are certain events and things that happen during the year that you need to take time out for. As a contractor, you pay yourself, okay? So let's say, for example, you've been doing five days a week for six weeks and then you decide to take the next week or two off. You won't get paid for that next week or two. So that means money won't be coming into your account for the preceding two weeks or week or whatever it may be. Are you okay with that? Are they okay with that? So maybe it makes sense to have a calculator that, again, highlights and generates and predicts how much money is going to come in. That's planning. That's, that's keeping things on track. And so thinking about all of this stuff, it gives you a clear idea that communication is very key. 
transparency is very important and being aligned and compatible with that alignment is fundamental for ensuring that this is a really good partnership moving forward, especially if they are a non-contractor. So hopefully this has given you some ideas and some talking points when talking to your partners as well. And of course, if you wanna see more information tailored around contracting, if you're looking to get into contracting yourself, please feel free to check out the Independent Consultant, a guide for people wanting to become a contractor within the UK. You can check out the link below or should pop up somewhere around this video as well. For more videos around life management, portfolio careers, and just being an awesome human being, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And as always, my friends, understand, reach, and expand. Peace.